Okay, so the today's session we are going to continue from where we have stopped last time. We discussed about the built-in data structures. So there were four built-in data structures in Python: list, tuple, dictionary, and sets. And last time we look at what list is. Basically, it is an ordered collection of items, which means you can directly access item based on the location. And then it uses the square brackets to denote that it's a list and you can manipulate what is inside. Since you can manipulate what is inside, this is known as a mutable data type, right? So the type of this is a list. So basically we look at uh, how to manipulate by uh, uh, using this example where I stored a set of numbers as a list. And then we discuss different methods that actually you can use to, you know, access the details. And I told you like, this is not the whole list. There are many others, many other methods where you can get the complete list by typing help list. Then we did an example based on this one. And finally, we discuss nested list, which means we can have list inside the, the other list. And the classic example would be, you know, use of matrices. Okay, so having said that, let's start today's session. So today we are going to look at what we call tuples. Now the tuple is same as list. It's an ordered collection of items, which means you can access details based on the location. And it uses what we call the rounded brackets. In list we had uh, square brackets. You can create a tuple, but once you create, you cannot change anything inside, which means this is known as an immutable data type. So the list is a mutable, which means anyone can change what is inside. But in tuple, once you create the tuple, uh, you cannot change what is inside. So therefore, we say tuple is an immutable data type. Right. Now, let's look at an example. Um, so let me take uh, the idle session. So I'm taking idle session here and then I'm going to get a new file as well. So I would like to list all the methods available. And if you look at uh, the methods available in tuples, uh, only very few uh, methods you could see because uh, we will have uh, we can count number of time one particular value occurs in a tuple we can get the the index we can get the length if you want you can delete the whole tuple other than that you cannot do anything because once you create it i told you you cannot change what is inside the tuple so these are the only method that you could use okay right now having said that Let's uh, back to the questions. So let me uh, first start by creating this, uh, the tuple, right? Um, I'm going to write this as a separate uh, one, but before that, let me create number tuple. So number tuple, the name you can type anything. There was a question last time. It doesn't matter. But remember, we have to use rounded bracket this time because this round brackets denote that this is a tuple. Right, now I'm going to use set of values like in previous case. Right, and this is like a number of elements inside. So for example, if you want, uh, you can simply print, you know, number tuple. Right. So which will give you what is inside as a whole. Or you can use a for loop like in the previous case. No change of that. For example, we can say for i in number tuple. And you can simply print i which will print one at a time. So this is quite same as lists. No change. And when you want to access individual elements, remember we talked about last time, there's an index. For example, in Python, index start with zero. So when you say number tuple zero, you should get the first value, right? So let me put uh, number tuple, square bracket. If you put zero, so you'll get the first value. 
Similarly, if you want to get the last value, can you tell, uh, can you type uh, what is the command? Let's say I want to print 50. What is the command you type? Yes, can you use the chat session? Right. Simply I got the correct answers many of you have put. So we can say number, tuple, the index if you count from zero that the last one is four. So we could have put like this. Right. Now having said that, so we, we discussed now how to print. We, we created this but we cannot change. There are no methods we could change this. Now for example, if I try to change, let's say I'm going to change the first value, it's 11, right? So let me change it to, tw uh, you know, 12. If I try to type something, you, you, it says that object, the tuple object does not support item assignment. So if you use, for example, type number tuple, we know that it says uh, its uh, class is tuple. Tuple is immutable. Uh, which means you cannot change but then you can for example get number of items like len for example right you can get the length of the tuple or finally you can delete it right we can have delete number tuple and once you delete if you try to you know access it it says there's nothing in it right now let me quickly type this. So creating a tuple, create a tuple with a set of numbers. So we said number tuple. What you need to remember is use of uh, you know the round brackets. You comma separate, right? And the secondly, you can check the type. So we can say print type number tuple. So if I run these thing, two things, so let me first save this. Right, in the desktop uh, we have this. Uh, the last program number we said program 23. 24, yes. Tuple. Right. If I run it, you see we get class tuple. Right. Then, if you need the length of the tuple, well, we can say number of items. Number of items in the tuple. We can simply say print len number tuple. So 
so if I do this run run module will get this right and then next printing printing uh, we can simply say print number tuple so if I do this printing run run module so you see uh, we have three lines first the class then number of items then this so if you want to use for loop you can use a for loop for i in number tuple and simply we can say print i if you want to get the values separately so if you do like this so you will get after this one you will have one item at a time it will print all the the items right now the final one is delete the tuple the tuple in this case whole tuple not a one particular item you cannot do that we can say del number tuple right so that's all we need to do and these are the methods what you need to remember is once you create you cannot change or you cannot delete anything in a tuple but that's all you need to remember okay those who have finished up to this point uh, can you please raise your hands so that uh, I can move to the next part right okay uh, we have about four uh, raise their hands we are waiting for Ajay, Asanka, Buddhini, Darshita and Manoj anyone who is having difficulties please let me know so that I can uh, help you right uh, we have four of you actually uh, finished this I am waiting for the others to finish Ajay, Buddhini, Darshita and Manoj. If, if you are having any question or if you have difficulty please let me know. right let's start so with that one we can finish the discussion of tuples that's all you need to remember you can lower the hands now thanks uh, and we'll next move on to uh, the sets but before that if you need to know anything about tuple you can type help tuple uh, that's how you should access the help in python you can say help tuple and it will you know talk about what tuple and then what methods you can access within that what methods you can actually use so all those information you can get it from here right okay next one question yep so what would be the use case of tuples given we have list a cable of the Oh, yeah now now the thing is this what now if you define some let's say you want to keep some parameters now in machine learning for example 
in machine learning once we train we can have parameters parameters we will not sometimes not going to change let's say you you need sometimes uh, you want to keep some values and you are not going to allow users to change then you better store it as a tuple now if you store it as a list then uh, if you know the list name then you can actually change the values inside so the tuples usually we use in configuration files for example uh, where we keep the values we uh, define the values in the beginning but we are not going to change any of the values but you can make use of so in tuple you can store some values and nobody can change it but you can make use of the values stored in tuple whereas list if you want to change values then you can go for lists Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you will see some examples along the way when we talk about these, uh, you know, uh, uh, putting uh, programs. You will see some places we use list and commonly we use list actually. Uh, but uh, whenever you want to make sure that nobody will change the values, then you have to define it as a tuple. Okay, thanks uh, for the question. Right, let's move on to the sets. Now, um, most of the time you see list and tuples are go uh, together, but the sets slightly different. Now sets, there's no order like in two previous cases. So we say that set is an unordered collection. But there's a one point that in set, it's a set contains unique values, not like in other two. Uh, for example, list and tuple, you can you could have uh, have uh, duplicate values. That means same value could appear twice. But when it comes to set and set theory, if you have uh, done, you know that uh, the values are unique. And to represent sets in Python, we use curly brackets. Now remember, we use square brackets for list, round brackets for tuple, and now we are using curly brackets. So there's no index because there's no order, so which means there's no index as well, right? And you cannot uh, change the values, but you can add new values. So let's see how we could, uh, you know, work with sets. Let's uh, go back to the methods. Now, usually you can add and discard that means you can remove but you cannot uh, you know basically uh, the change uh, and then you can get the length and you can delete the whole set to get the help for set you can simply say help and set okay so let me discuss uh, you know some of these uh, you know methods using the example so uh, I'm going to create right uh, new one new file and this time I'm going to create a set so this time I'm going to create a, a set with a set of numbers okay right so I'm going to say number set and the name you can use the way any way you want but make sure that you use curly brackets so let me put some values 1, 2 and 23 and 45 and 15 and then if you want to print right you can simply say print number set right now let me save this file save and this time uh, program number 25 you see 25 uh, we are going to have sets and when you run it you will see we can run run module okay uh, you see now here we have some values but that order is different from this order so that means there's no exact order with these values remember it's very important now just to say that now for example if you want to add something to this you can add it right that part I will come the next one is you can print one at a time like we did so same thing we can use we can say 4i in um, number set 
and simply we can say print tag which will print everything one after the other so we can say run run module right so here we just print everything and here we will actually print one item at a time right so these are the two uh, printing statements now let's add uh, some values adding values uh, the method is add so we can say number set dot add we can let's say six so I'm adding six to the set and then let me print it number set let's see how this goes so let me run run module so this is my original one and six inserted here it's again arbitrary there's no ascending or descending order so you will notice that so this is because we are not maintaining any order of the item but if you add the uh, duplicate values that it won't change <coughs> sort of <coughs> sorry for example if you say number set let me add again six if I try to add six and if you say number set again you see no change that is not added because it consists of unique values let me add another one let me put seven and let's check this time yeah seven is added and the position is arbitrary so we don't know really where it actually you know insert in the list but somewhere it is going to store right <clears throat> and then similarly length if you say len number set it will work like uh, previous cases so it will give you the number of elements inside the list and removing also can do uh, for example there are two methods that you can use right first one is remove so we can say number set dot remove let's say I'm going to remove 25 right so that's done if I check again now you see number 25 is no more in the set <clears throat> so let me remove something called 3 and you see 3 is not in the the set right so it will give you an error because 3 is not there okay similarly we can use another method called uh, discard right so discard let's see how it works so i'm going to say number set discard let me say 45 discard let's say 45 then if i print it again now you see uh, 45 is no more there now let me take again let me try to remove three three is not there but this time it will not give you any any error right that's the difference between the remove and discard so if you use remove and if that particular item is not in the the set it will give you an error right whereas if you use discard it won't give you an error so make a note of this that is the difference between um, remove and discard so let me add some items here so removing items removing items so for example we can say number set dot uh, remove so I can remove let's say two then another one is number set discard let me use 45 so if you do like this when you uh, will it will print after this I'm going to say print number set yes if I do this run run module right so originally this is what I have so we will remove 2 and 45 and this is what we end up
okay and finally if you want to delete you can delete the whole number set now for example we can say delete number set yes we can put it like this we can say del number set which will uh, you know remove everything so if you try to use number set there's nothing um, so it says name number set is not defined which means uh, we don't have uh, a set like this so I hope now it is clear to you that we are not going to make use of uh, sorry so in this particular case we said uh, it's a set a set contains a unique elements uh, we discuss how to print the elements adding values removing uh, values and we removing items and finally uh, remove everything right so that's what we need to discuss okay if you finish up to this point uh, can you please raise your hand so that I know that uh, you have finished up to this point thanks right majority of you have you have done uh, we have left with uh, Ajay Manoj and uh, Buddhika Manoj Ajay done okay thanks okay everyone done now we have completed three list mutable tuple immutable right and then set it uh, contains unique value so let's look at the last one that is dictionary so in some programming languages sometimes we use hash tables but dictionary again we will have index but it is not a numerical index now remember in uh, list and tuples we know the first item is zero second item is one we have index based now instead of that we have what we call key value pair instead of a number we are going to have a key I will explain what this is right so that's what we call dictionary so let's start the dictionary um, right let me uh, first of all uh, you know show you the methods here are the few methods that we are going to discuss we will have get method the items keys len update and uh, deletion of the dictionary right let me start this right I'm going to open up so here is my shell I'm going to get a new file and this time I'm going to save this file save I'm going to save it as a dictionary right I'm going to save it as a dictionary so program number 26 dictionary right now dictionary format is slightly different from the way we have put it but let me show you how exactly what will happen so this is how we are going to create uh, a dictionary right now for example number dict right remember here we are going to make use of uh, curly brackets and then we have key value pair now key is 1 in this particular case and the value is ichi right this is 2 and this is ni that is actually in Japanese then 3 sun right I think uh, we'll stop at this point so we can have this right so this is the dictionary so what really happens here let me go back to the example that we have done with the list and tuple now earlier in list 
we could have done like this in list we could have done like this how you create a list right and then you will have only three values the three values are right ichi ni and san right so the name we have given here then we have index we had 0 1 2 like this index now this time we don't have index what we have is key so that means key is 1 in according to this one so we can say uh, we will get red color right so instead of numerical one in dictionary we will put a name so we can have one two and three so instead of this index numerical index we have a keys right for example here we will say one here we will say two here we will say three right so now if you want to access the first item we know how to access it if you want to access the first item here we can type right so the name given for this is number dict right and we can say why you see the difference in list we have 0 1 2 here we have labels so to access the first element we have to say number dict 1 now similarly if you look at the last item here right here we will have number dict 3 and this is easy right now that I have talked about simple basics, so let's go back here. So we can just print this. So I can simply print number. So let me run, run, run module. Right, here is what we will get. So in, inside the curly brackets, we have 1 in chi, 2 ni, 3 sun, and so on. Right. Now, similarly, you can try the previous technique to print for i in number dict print i. So, if you do this, run run module. Yes, we are getting the values one after the other. Or oh, keys, we can say. We got the keys. right okay now if you put the traditional way make a note of this in traditional form right print values in the dictionary right so this is how we work on the dictionaries slightly different from previous ones right okay let's move to the next one so this will give you the values sorry this will give you keys not values Right. This will give you keys. So keys means this one. These are keys. These are values. Right. The next one. Now this is get the keys. Right. 
right now if you want to print items you have to slightly change this so we can say for i in number dict dot values print i right so here we are getting ichi nisan which is the values that we have stored right next one so you can take items at a time so what do you mean by items so let me show you uh, so in this case uh, we need values sorry print items for i in range sorry not range we don't have range we will say number dict dot items and then we can say print i slightly different so let me show you what happens yes you see tuples there one ichi, two ni, and three sa. You you get everything like this, right? Okay. Now, if you want to get the key, right, or whatever the values in key one, there are two ways that you can do, right? So, for example, we can say okay number dict, and we can say number dict. And we can say 1. You see, now instead of putting 0, we are putting 1. That's the key. It says ichi. Right. Similarly, if you have 2, yeah, it says ni. 3, it's sum. Okay. Right. Now that we have discussed, there are two parts in this dictionary. We have keys and values. We discuss how to get keys. If you use the traditional way you have done with the list and tuples, you are getting only the keys. If you want values, then you have to say value here. Right? And finally, if you want to print whole items, you simply put items. That's all you need to remember. And if you want to know the length of the dictionary, we can say length number dictionary. It says only three items inside the dictionary. Right. Okay. Now, one of the things that you can use it here, you can add new items. Now, for example, we have values for 1, 2, 3. Uh, in Japanese, we can have 4. So, let's add a new item. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, number dict. I'm going to say 4. Yeah, that is the key. And then, I'm going to say, yawn. So, by doing so, if you take number dictionary again, you will see, right, there are four items. There are four items. Okay. So, we have added four at the end. So, if it is clear up to this point, then we can add items. We have done it. And we can change the items. Okay. So, if let's say yon, there's a two methods of uh, saying four in Japanese. So, the second method is she. 
So I'm going to change this yon to she. So this is how I'm going to do. I'm going to say number dict, right? And we are going to say, okay, four. Now if you go back, if you check, the yon has changed to she. That means we can manipulate whatever we stored inside the dictionary. Okay, similarly, if you want to remove item, you can do the same. So let's say I want to remove two. So what I can do is write del number dict. I'm going to say two. If I do this and if you try number dictionary again, you see we will have only three values. Okay, so that's all I need to discuss on dictionaries. So if you have finished up to this point, can you please raise your hands? Right, thanks. Uh, I think we can move to the next one then. Right, now uh, we discuss how to, uh, you know, create a dictionary, uh, how to define keys and values. Remember, in list and tuple, we have numerical index. Here we can have any, right? So when we say one, two, three, so we can simply use, you know, number dict one to access the first element. So you don't have to remember, right? When you have values, it's easier for you to remember what to access. So that's uh, the advantage if you use, uh, you know, dictionaries. Okay, right. Now with this discussion, we actually completed the basic uh, data structures. Um, one more thing I want to do is uh, I want to discuss string manipulation. Now, a string is an, uh, another way 
that you can think it as uh, a list so in list manipulation also you can do the same so for example if you take uh, the word dialogue you know that we have characters right starting let's say as dialogue so you have characters so one thing that we have not discussed with the list so this is applied to the list as well so you can have uh, indexing you can go for forward indexing which means you start with 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on and then you can go backwards as well now what backward means so the the last letter can be represented using minus 1 then minus 2 minus 3 and so on so you can go for forward indexing backward indexing this is relevant to list as well which we have not discussed so simply you can think the string as a, a list of characters that's all right. so let me take uh, my idle session so let me take this side so that uh, you know easier for me to access right so this is what I'm going to do so if we say s equal dialogue what I'm going to say here that you can if you say s not it will be d dialogue s1 will be i finally s let's say 0 1 2 3 4 5 right which will give you the last one similarly you can come come back like s minus 1 meaning the last element so this indexing is, uh, you know, we will extensively use in data analytics, we will learn. So the last item, if you want to access, this is the method. So the index, we are going to get backward indexing. So the backward indexing is start with minus one. When you say minus one as the index, it will indicate the last item. Uh, similarly, uh, if you take uh, the first one, so that is minus six. Yes, and then minus 5. Okay, so try this and once you are comfortable, uh, please raise your hand. So then I will look at uh, slices. If you are comfortable up to this point, please raise your hands. Then we will move on to the slices. So now we have done uh, same thing, the strings. We have uh, seen it as a list of characters or list of letters from D to G Any questions, please? So forward indexing means we start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And backward indexing means you start with minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. You can go in both ways. So the first one easy, you say is no. And the last one you can simply say s minus 1 now for example let me take another string which I am going to take with arbitrary value oh sorry arbitrary value now if I ask you to uh, okay uh, get the last element simply you can say t minus 1 which will give you the last element that's all 
Okay, if you have finished up to this point, can you please raise your hands? Next one I am going to discuss the slices. Now I hope you remember start, stop and step which we have discussed in many other places like in range function. So for example this could be used to get uh, the slices. right? Now for example we can specify the start value and the uh, stop value and then step value so like this so I will take the shell now for example we have uh, yes, its dialog now when we say 0 to 4 what it means start and stop right start is 0 stop is 4 4 means it goes up to 3 right remember the very same format so it will come like 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? Simply you can say it's a first four letters. So if you have, if you start with 0, then you don't have to specify 0. Right? So the shorter version for this is simply if you start with 0, you can say 4. So this is a good point because if you want to get something like the first four elements, you can use this notation. For example, if I want to get first five elements, I can just put five and I know that I will get first five elements. Right. So the start and stop. Right. Next. Uh, another one like let's say is three and six. Now 3 means you start with 3. How do you get 3? So D is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When you say 6, it goes up to 5, right? So which means you should get log here. When you say 3, we know you can refer this one. When you say 3 to 6, so that means start is 3, that means L. Then 4, 5, up to 6, right? Not including 6. So that means you will get log. So in my case, I am getting log here. But then again, we know that this is the last one. Whenever you have last one, then you don't have to specify. So the shorter version of this is, you can say 3 and this. That's all. Same thing. Similarly, if you want to print everything, we can say something like this. We can say 0 to 6. Why 0 to 6? We know that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So you can have dialog. Since it's a start and stop, I told you, shorter version, you don't have to specify start and stop. So simply you can say a scholar. Right. Any questions up to this point? Are you comfortable up to this point?
right now let me uh, uh, discuss step as well now step is similar to the previous one so for example if I say something like this if I put 0 6 that means everything but step is 2 when you say step is 2 what will happen first you have 0 then you add 2 to it that 0 1 2 then we have 0 2 4 that's all we will get DAO why so this is 0 2 4 that's why we will get like this similarly if you have like um, the shorter version for this is a beginning you don't have to tell end you don't have to tell you simply put the step it's the same thing right similarly if you start with some other value let's say 3 6 2 right without typing can you type the answer in the chat without trying this can you guess what is the output so count the numbers so we can put it like this so this is what we were discussing right this is what we were discussing right without checking the answer can you tell me yes what is the output Yes, you start with 3, right? That means you start with this one. Then goes up to 6 with a step of 2. So 3 plus 2 is 5. Then 5 plus 2, 7. No? So that means we left with L and G. LG. So outcome of this should be LG. Just try you should get like that the shorter version is simply you can this is the start it's not zero so you can put three six is the end value so I told you like end value you don't have to specify so you can just say colon you can just put two so this is the shorter version of this one Right. Next one. Can you tell me what is the output of this one without typing in the Python? Without typing, can you tell me, can you guess what is the output of this? Start is 0, stop is 6, step is 1. Simply this is beginning to the end, isn't it? So this is a start, this is end. So that means it will be dialogue, right? Good, dialogue. So since you are using default value, you don't have to specify any. So simply the shorter version, if you have two colons like this, this means the same thing. That means we are going to, we are expressing everything from the beginning.
so if I put this it will be empty and since 3 is arbitrary value 6 the n so we can simply say 2 same thing similarly if you start with 0 and stop is 6 and step is 1 so this means everything that means dialog so we can say 0 you don't have to specify 6 you don't have to specify 1 is the default value so simply if you put it this this is also same as expressing the whole string remember that you can actually use this with list as well although we have not done this last one can you guess this we have minus 1 minus 7 minus 1 yes minus 1 so you start with this one so that means you get g right goes up to minus 7 with minus 1 as the step so when you have minus 1 next one is minus 2 so then we will have o right then again minus 1 then l then minus 1 you get minus 4 you will get a again minus 1 minus 5 you will get i right and minus 6 d x is minus 7 you know that minus 7 is not included so you will get other way around so minus 1 so if you take this if you say s minus 1 that means the last letter minus 7 in other way is the first letter and the step is minus 1 you will get this I told you start and stop you don't have to specify simply if you see this this means okay the same thing okay one question can you guess if I put minus 2, what will happen? If I put minus 2, what will happen? Yes, Manage gave me the answer. How about the others? Sahan, Bamunu. So basically, you start with the last one, isn't it? So it is fine. It will always start the default value. It defined like this if you have default value is if it is a positive value you start with the first letter mm. and goes up to the last letter if it is positive if it is negative then start with last letter goes up to the first letter So this is very important for example in a data set uh, when you when we talk about let me give an example where we need now let's say we have a set of columns and we want to select only a few so this is exactly what we are going to do so we are going to say that now for example the if you want to select only the last column you will see the data set name and then you will say minus one will select the last column of a data set and if you want to like uh, you know change the column in a descending order meaning like the last column as the first one this is how you represent you put minus one 
for some reason let's say you want to change the order of the columns you can use this fashion so basically we will learn later on in data manipulation this whatever we have learned here is very very important and we will make use of this so you can use this notation to manipulate the fields that means uh, you know features and then you can manipulate rows as well now let's say you have a hundred thousand records and you want to get 10 percent of the data set so simply we can use this notation so we will discuss these ideas later on but i think for the time being i i want you to practice this because this is exactly what you are going to use in coming sessions right so this is called slicing and we have done slicing with the strings but you could use this with other places as well right any questions and are you comfortable with up to this point if you are comfortable can you please raise your hands that if you are comfortable with the slices yeah those who have have issues maybe you spend uh, more time on these things and practice it because i am uploading uh, all this uh, material as well as the video please refer and get familiar with this notation because it's very useful for us uh, in coming sessions right now having said that uh this is simply how uh, you can actually manipulate strings um uh, same thing actually though. so this is i actually i told you the uh, you know and when you have a string a string is nothing but a sequence of characters in that case you can simply write a for loop to access individual characters like this right this is also the same thing so uh, basically if you take this one so as yes, we know this and if you want to access each individual element we can say for i in or uh, we can say s and we can say print i right which will uh, print one character at a time so instead of i we are going to say for char in s and we can say print char character right which will give you the same answer it's just to uh, you know uh, make it complete the note and with that one actually we could uh, you know uh, finish discussing uh, the strings part in string manipulation right i think we have now completed a couple of topics uh, we finished tuples we have finished uh, sets and we have finished dictionaries and now we have also finished string manipulation and especially we have uh, looked at you know uh, slices right uh, a very important one right now i think we are ready to look at oop concept in python and remember this is not a comprehensive uh, session but you i want you to give the basics because remember all these integers uh, floating point numbers uh, and even list tuples they are actually uh, classes in python right whenever you get a number you are using int class right now for example if i say okay x equal 10 and if you say type x we know it's int it's a class int and if you look at what is inside int right um, you can get a lot of information about the class right so the class int object so it define how you actually define int what are the methods that you could use with the int everything is defined in the class right now similarly if you take a list as well now for example if i say okay number list and let's say i'm going to create some 
numbers like this and if I say type number list so it says this is a class list so the list is a class in Python so the classes are common most of the things actually written as classes so we should know what a class is we should know how to make use of classes right especially when you are creating objects so that's why we will have OOP and we are going to look at the basics right so again in list as well if you say help list you can see how it is actually defined right what are the things we have uh, you know list and then we have other methods inside right so we have a set of methods where you can apply on these classes so everything is here so to see uh, to understand more about uh, you know these things we should identify what object orientation is as well as how object orientation applied in python and this is exactly what i'm going to discuss right now uh, in traditional programming we have uh, we can write a lot of functions uh, and we can make use of that uh, to uh, simplify our problem solving but then again uh, in functions we have data we pass some parameters and then uh, we get the answers but when it comes to objects you also can have data as well as methods right so object is consist of you know what we call variables uh, the correct name for this is instance variable and then we also call them as data members and also we will have functions right together so this is easy and this is one paradigm of programming where you can think everything as objects right now for example if i take the class you uh, students we can identify as student objects each of you because you have some similarities you have name you have address you have a set of skills you know we can represent it as a class as a template and then we can have specific values to represent each of you as objects right now what we can see uh, in a classes and especially when you want to represent classes uh, there are different notations we use but common notation is we can implement uh, before implement we can represent class uh, using the class background so in class background notation usually uh, it's a rectangular shape uh, and divide into three parts as class and set of variables and set of methods right the three parts are the name of the class then instance variables and the methods now for example let's say we are going to create a class to represent a credit card so the name of the class is credit card isn't it then you have set of variables like you have to you know when you have a credit card we have to keep uh, customer name we have to keep uh, bank name account details credit card limit and credit card balance so this is some information that we want to keep about credit card so they are the variables then you can perform actions like we call methods now you can get customer name you can get a bank name you can make purchases using credit card and uh, and also you can settle the credit card we can you can make payment so you can see when you talk about the class you can have a instances uh, sorry variables and then you can have a set of methods so then you can create one entity right and by creating uh, objects from this you can represent different credit cards now for example sometimes we might carry multiple credit cards so we can make use of same you know the class to create different objects for different uh, credit cards okay now let's look at some other example now if you take a person for example now we can represent each of the person as objects 
right now the variables are sometimes you can say name of the person age of a person address and what operations the person can perform we can represent the mass methods like walking talking breathing running and so on let's say you have email application and you are going to use object orientation the variables might be the recipient list or the subject and the body of your email the methods could be uh, things like you want to add an attachment and also you want to send an email so these might be the methods similarly if you take a car for example right so we can keep track of year of the manufacturer and the model of the car and current mileage so these are the variables and the methods means like like accelerating braking and so on so you see that everything we can represent using these instance variables and the methods right now once you have these objects to create object you need a class class simply a pattern or maybe that is the outline now if you take a house for example the class will be the pattern once you have the pattern then you can construct any number of uh, you know cars similar comes here as well so in this case we have a class uh, you know template where we define what the car is with instances and the methods and these are the objects we can represent different cars using this class template but to create, we need what we call the constructor. So when you have a constructor, constructor will create objects, right? So we can create objects using a class. Right, now to see how this works. So remember, um, this is the main concept that we will use in object orientation. And if you take whatever the data items in Python is actually it's an instance of some class. Remember, if you use integer number, it's come from integer class. If you take a floating point number, it's come from the floating point class and so on. Right. Now, having said that, let's uh, start with the self-identifier. Now, when we work with the objects, now let's say credit card objects. So sometimes the objects, objects can interact each other. So that means sometimes when you perform a method, there could be another, you know, object involved in it. But sometimes when you want to refer the same object, we use what we call the self keyword or self identify. So basically if you say a self in any way in the Python code, it means you are going to look at yourself, right? The object itself, that, that's what self means. Right, okay. So I think now we have some basis of uh, object orientation. So let's look at uh, how we could create uh, uh, object and also the classes in Python. Now to represent that I will take a new window. Right now here is what I have and then what we need is um, class let's say student. So in this particular case right so we can yes we have three parts so this is my class diagram for the student we have one variable name and we have two methods get name and study right now let's discuss how we are going to do this to define a class we can start with class student right and basically this means it's a student class uh, this is just like comment especially in classes uh, we have not done doc strings uh, something called doc string is there uh, especially when you want to get help 
you can write the information but for the time being let's just assume that this is a comment uh, so inside the student we will we are going to create now the first thing is we have to come up with a constructor now constructor means how do you create objects right now when you look at the constructor this is how we are going to define we say def we will type underscore underscore init now init mean initialization now then how do you initialize okay now we have the self keyword here now when you initialize means you are going to create a particular object at that time okay you are referring to yourself so that's why we have self here and let's assume that to create a student we have to provide a student name so i'm going to have a student name like this right okay and then uh, we have to match the value so i'm going to say self dot name so that's the variable and that variable we have uh, filled with student name right now let me save this right file save I'm going to say file save right and in the desktop uh, I'm going to say program 27 okay student class uh, you don't have to name it as the same name it's not necessary in Python uh, but here's how I did it like I'm going to now run this once you run you don't see anything here but we have created a student class now when you want to create students now I can create let's say student one I'm going to say student one I can say okay student right within that we can provide the name let's say summer basically this is how we create object so if you put s1 it's a student object similarly I can create second student again by providing a student name right now for example I can say company so this is another student if you try to type s2 it says another object so you can access the details now for example s1.name we can get the name of the student s2.name okay that's company right right now now we have seen a template we have created the class student right now it's initialization initial estimation how do you create it now how do we create we provide a name so that provide name is student name that student name we are going to assign into the the variable in the class right so that is the name variable here so that's what we refer here so we are getting a student name from the outside and we assign it to name so that's why when we say s one dot name we got the student's name okay now let's create the other methods now the methods that now this is the data now the methods are something like this now for example we have get name method get name means if you use this method it should return the name of the student so always remember you have to use self here to rep say that okay you are going to refer in the same object right now we can say return self dot name so self dot name means the same thing so let me run again run run module okay now here is what we have now we want to create s1 i'm going to say student summer right uh, now I'm going to make use of s1 dot get name it says summer you see how the method works I actually we use this same fashion when we are creating right uh, when you use dot operator we have used the very same thing now for example turtle object remember last time we said T and then we say t dot forward isn't it similar thing okay right 
Now let me put another method here. Right. Uh, I'm going to say def study. Again, remember to use self. This indicates that you are going to apply this method for the same object. So you are going to return a message here. Right. Study. Right. Now if I run it, now this time we have defined two methods. So when I say S1 equals to done, we say someone, right? Now if I say call get name, I'm getting the name of the student. And when I say S1 dot study, yes, it stayed study. This is just to give you a very simple idea on how we may create classes. So what do you need to remember in a class, you have a class name and then you have set of variables and then you have a set of methods. Right? Okay. Any questions from this one? Are you comfortable with the, the class student? Or do you want me to explain one more time? Could you extract part? What this init thing is? Yeah, init means it's a special method we use to say that the creation of the object, object creation. Now, when I say object creation in our case, this is the place where we create the object, isn't it? Now, this is the object name, and this is the class, and then we provide a name. So this statement, what happens here, we pass this name to this class student and we initialize, we create a object called S1. So in object S1, inside we have only one variable that is name. When you are initializing, whatever the student's name you provide will be assigned to this name variable inside the student. So when you say S1 student summon, what happens really, it will create an object called S1. That's what this init does. And then it will assign the, this particular name summon to the name variable inside S1. Right. So let me use S2 for example. S2, when I create student company. Yes, what happens here when I press enter, the company, there will be an object called S2. You can just type and it will say that it's an object, S2. And then when I put company, company is assigned to S2 name. Right? So this is exactly what init does. Init means initialization, the constructor that we discussed. This is the place where you actually create the object. Object creation happens with init. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, for example, if you want to create an object with something else, you can have another init one. You can have any number of init, right? Let's say you want to create a student name and age, for example. So that you can specify here. The right now it's a very simple one we have used. Right. Is this the first time you have uh, you are learning object orientation? Or have you already learned some time back and you forgot or what? Yeah, yeah I have done but so it's different. Uh, Syntax, right? So yes, exactly, exactly. So slightly different, but I think the same, same things. Yeah. Yeah. Same ideas are there, but I think the representation will be slightly different. Okay. Um, thanks a lot uh, for asking a lot of questions. Uh, so you can create some more. Uh, objects and then you can try assigning different names try you know calling this method like I can now say s2 dot get name 
we have already defined it it says company and let's say s2 dot study yeah so it says study so in the note actually uh, you can uh, since we don't have a time I will show you like one example is you uh, the in the exercise you can create the, the class and then I have also given you complete implementation for the credit card just to get uh, an idea of how you may actually use a credit card right so I will share this with you so spend some time on the credit card uh, class so there we will have several values now for example we have customer name bank name account name credit limit everything is given here when you're initializing which means when you're creating a credit card you have to provide these values you have to provide the name of the customer you have to provide the bank account number and also the credit limit so here you don't have to specify the balance you know that when you create the credit card already we have not used it so the balance is zero right so the balance will be zero so you don't have to get that one now for example here we will say that the self balance is zero whereas when you're creating you have to provide customer name bank name account name and the credit limit so those four values are enough the balance always we see you so uh, I think the best would be you spend some time on implementing this. This is the basis. Now the next one is implement a class for car. Uh, in this particular case, we are using three instances and two methods. Okay. So with that one, um, we can conclude the today's session and like we did earlier i would like to have a some feedback session where i would like to get your true feedback where you are not comfortable in the topics now today we have done several topics but please let me know which are the topics you are not comfortable so that we can actually uh, make adjustments right um, next one so today what we did actually basically we mainly done complete the data structures and OOP concepts right uh, I would like to uh, you know get uh, your feedback on these two topics so please uh, visit uh, menti.com uh, let me present this first I would like to know what are the three things that you have learned the most important ones according to you what are the three things that you have learned today that's the first one second one I want you to list the difficult parts that you felt difficult when you when when you were in the lesson so so that I can spend some more time next time anyway I will go through the complete credit card uh, problem so that uh, you will have a good understanding of classes in Python
right basically in today's session we look at uh, the rest of the data structures we look at tuple sets and dictionaries then we also look at uh, slicing uh, in python and then finally we look at the classes okay so let's move to the next part So the classes I think uh, you better try with the example I have given to you. Uh, so next week we can look at more examples and I will completely I will do uh, credit card complete example so that you can have a good understanding about the classes in Python. So with that one actually we finish the basis. Uh, and from next week we are going to start with uh, the modules related to data analytics especially machine learning uh, we will look at numerical python a library uh, so next session half of the session i will talk about oop a little bit more detail and then once i finish that i will switch to numerical python or numpy library which is uh, a commonly used library for data manipulation right uh, so that's the plan so having said that uh, we'll finish for today thank you everyone and then uh, have a nice uh, weekend uh, we'll meet again uh, next week uh, with another session thank you thank you sir thank you sir